Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the third episode of my Wellington Wanderers series. Here today we're going to go into the second round of the FFA Cup, which we're going to play against the Central Coast Mariners. Quite a bit's happened since we last left off, and I'll show you that in the transfers. We've actually made some transfers, which I'm very happy about. Billingsley came in, I know I was talking about him last uh, last episode, he looks alright, bit of a rotation player, I'm looking to get rid of um, Louis Fenton now that we've got him and don't need him on the book, so I feel like he's quite a good rotation player, can play a couple of roles. Uh, Brett Holman's come in as a right-sided midfielder, because it didn't feel like we had a very good natural one out there, and he's got very low wage and quite experienced, I think he might have even played in some pretty solid leagues, yep, Premier League for a season, so we're very ha happy to welcome him into the side have that experience Saprit Singh I talked about last season at, uh, last episode and we're very happy to have him back in the Phoenix after going on uh, a short spell to the Bayern second 11 only to come back on loan to us and the big one is Matty Longstaff with a value of 9.25 million four and a half star current ability and five star potential this man is going to be great for us i can't wait to get him involved you might have heard of him because he scored an absolute banger against manchester united in real life at old trafford to give newcastle a one nil win unfortunately that does mean that we have had to release a few players Storero, uh, sorry um, I didn't feel like he was really cutting the mustard and I'm happy to be rid of him. He had a $1.5,000 wage and I don't feel like we really could justify it. Uh, same with um, uh, Davila, he had a 4.5,000k uh, uh, a week salary and I just wasn't willing to pay it because we've actually got some restrictions in this league where we can't have over 32500 pounds in the wage budget at once so he was making it go over with these new signings and i felt like having long stuff and sing is a bit better than having him but i am quite sad to see him go as well as mcging who i said looked like a good youth prospect but i'm pretty happy to see the back of him after i found out he had 1.5 thousand dollar uh wage so we're gonna get straight into this match here i've already got it loaded up and we'll tell the players that Tell them to come on and show me what they can do. Hopefully, uh, no response. I never get a response these days. And I'll say, um, have faith in them. Because I do have faith in them. I do believe we can do well against the Central Coast Mariners side. They're not a very good side. No disrespect for them. No disrespect to them. They do have Tommy Orr, who you might recognise. Bit of a uh, famous A-League player playing for the Ipswich side and for the Eredivisie for quite some time. But... I do feel like we will be able to win this game. Watch us go on and win, uh, lose 5 0 after I've said that. But here goes a new signing. Maddie Longstaff on the ball, passes it to Taylor, who plays it up to Payne. Payne takes a hit, and what a goal from the right back, Tim Payne. I was not expecting that when I clicked onto the highlight. What a hit. We're definitely watching that replay. Oh, Steven Taylor with a really good ball. I thought he was going to pop a ball in. Maybe have it wriggle around the box and maybe we could score a goal. But what a hit from Tim Payne. We don't mind that at all. Hopefully we can continue playing down that right side that well. With Holman especially on his debut today. Holman plays the ball in and Berrigetti gets it. Hopefully that's not the end of the highlight because that would be a pretty bland one. As uh, uh, strikers rush forward, Taylor gets the ball. Taylor gives it straight back to McGlinchey, not doing... Another assist like he did just before. McGlinchey, the former Phoenix player, of course, making some headways. But eventually it comes to nothing, and we're happy that it has come to nothing. Still a bit dominant, uh, quite dominant on position. That's what we want. The Geegan press does often guarantee a bit of position. Payne putting in a nice ball, but no one there. Steinman to Kakachi. Payne getting in there again, and Hooper. This is an absolute sitter. He is a marquee player, and right now in the games I've shown you guys, he is not doing very well, but during friendlies, he's still banging them in. He got uh, two goals in the last friendly we played, so 
He certainly knows how to score, and if you look at his stats, you can definitely tell that is the case. As Sapraj Singh scores his first goal for the Phoenix, and that is why I brought him in on long. Not as a, not his first goal for the Phoenix, sorry, his first goal back at the Phoenix. And Callum McCowart, that man that I've been absolutely riding home about, has gotten the assist, and we don't mind that at all. Gives us a two-goal cushion going into the 24th minute. We have another highlight, and... It's bouncing around Stephen Taylor, Holman, but eventually it goes out for a goal kick. I think Holman was offside, but it doesn't really matter in the end of it. No goal either way. Stephen Taylor takes a free kick. Holman gets the ball. Taylor bangs it long, uh, as I expected him to. And now the Central Coast Mariners are coming at us with Jurich. Taylor comes back and makes a good tackle. Or maybe it was Devere, I'm not too sure. But Taylor ended up with the ball, clears it out. And that's the end of that chance. These chances don't seem to be very key highlights to me these days. I, I don't know if that's just me, but this uh, football manager feels like they do include quite a few highlights. You know, it's there's no there's no middle ground between uh, key highlights and only commentary this year. You know, I don't know. I, maybe it's just me, but I certainly feel like in previous football managers, just about every chance was a goal when you put it on key highlights, but, I mean, we don't mind seeing a few more highlights, but, uh, when they're shots like that, that really aren't troubling the goalkeeper, I don't care too much for them, but I feel like this one might be a good hi highlight, as Holman puts a ball in, Hooper takes a header, but it goes off the top of the bar, apparently, didn't see that hit the bar, but who am I to know, the graphics in this game are not exactly top draw, and into the second half, we are 2-0 up, I'm going to tell them I'm very pleased with how things are going. I don't feel like I need to make a change at this point. We're doing very well. Unless someone gets a knock or is starting to look a bit fatigued, I think we're going to keep it the way it is for now. As they put a ball in from the corner, Tommy or that man I was worried about. Looks like he's doing a bit down that left, but not too much that we should really be thinking about changing anything up. As Gordon plays it back to his goalkeeper. See, this is what I mean. It's just... This highlight is doesn't seem very key to me, you know, like I know I know that we've gone and scored from it and gone offside goal. Uh but that that was a very extended amount. I didn't need to see that corner. I could have just seen it when we got turnover. You know, it's it's really extending my videos out, you know. I don't feel like I need to be making uh ten minute videos for each game. So Yeah, we hopefully we can continue Putting, putting this high pressure on them. But the shots are very similar, which is not good. But we do have a lot of possession as Holman whips a ball in, which doesn't meet anyone as Cypress Hill gets the ball back. And Payne looks to make a pass. Oh, well, he doesn't really look to make a pass. He just goes back to Marinovic. Easy option. Kakachi takes the ball up. Taylor going for a long pass, as he often does. But Tommy Orr gets the ball. And I think this is going to be the Central Coast Mariners' chance. With McGlinchey on the ball. Oh, no, I've spoken too soon. Holman gets the ball back. Puts a ball in. McCow at the back post scores the goal. And I think that's going to be his last contribution. Although I am absolutely obsessed with this guy in the save. As you guys already know from the first two episodes, I have to take him off because of this injury. Because I'm not risking not having him at the start of the season. Because he is going to be influential for us, to say the least. I can't wait to get him involved in the season. Hopefully he keeps progressing. Hopefully he keeps playing well. But Piscopo comes straight on. Takes a shot right at the goalkeeper. But he looks fresh already. He looks like he's ready to make an impact as well. Safarit Singh puts in the corner. But we all know. After a shot like that. The corner isn't really a chance. It's just kind of a continuation of the highlight. Which is never going to lead to anything as we see there. And they have a. Throw in, which goes straight to their player, but Kakachi gets it back, and we play it to Holman, who has acres of space. He really should be scoring there, and he does on his debut. That puts it to 4-0, guys. I really am feeling optimistic about the season now. Not that I wasn't feeling optimistic before, but if we can keep going the way we are, the only thing I'm worried about is Gary Hooper, with, especially with the wage he's on. He's on 6.25 K a week, and I, I was complaining about Davila because he had 4.5. Hopefully he can come good soon. I'm sure he will. But I think we're going to make another change just to 
make sure we close this game out. I think I might bring... I think I'm going to bring Alex Rufer on for Steinman. Don't want to get anyone injured. And maybe David Ball on for Hooper. Hooper's really not playing well in these FFA Cup games. And I think we're going to go straight into the next round. I don't think it's in doubt anymore. I think I think that the best player on the team so far has got to be um, Macau. I'm so super stoked with how he's been playing. But I'm not impressed with Hooper so far. So hopefully we can get some goals in from him soon as they have a last few minute attack. And I think, yes, they do score a bit of a consolation goal. Bit disappointing that the ball goes straight over the top of our defenders. We don't have the paciest defenders in the world. And maybe that's why I should keep Hudson Mahongi on the pitch, but I don't know. It's a... Uh, I don't think there's a lot you can do about a great ball like that. I don't think I have another substitute. It's worth a try, but no, now I just look like an idiot on YouTube. But this is, of course, just one of those silly chances that they give you when you make a, make a change. It actually isn't a chance, but final chance of the game, hopefully. Tommy Orr puts the ball in, and it goes wide off a header from them. And I think we're just going to run out the clock. Oh no, Sabret saying puts the ball in, and can we get another one, Longstaff? No, I think if anyone's going to get another one there, it's going to be Central Coast Mariners, although Payne does make a tackle, but De Silva does get it back, and they have a corner leading into those last few seconds. Hopefully we can run the clock out. I'm sure we will, even if they score here. There's not really a chance of them coming back into the game, and I think that's probably going to be full-time. Yes, it is. 4-1 win. I mean, the shots are, like, very similar, which is a little bit concerning. So I hope that that's not um, going to bite us in the butt when uh, we're coming against some more prolific play players. But right now it seems to be doing the trip 4-1 against a side that we're actually going to play in the league this year. Eastern Suburbs is our next opponent, and they play in the north uh, the NPL Queensland. I'm not quite sure where that league is, but I think that's a kind of non-league-esque uh, uh, competition I was talking about. And I, I'm not feeling too nervous about it, if I'm being honest. I'm pretty sure we'll get the win pretty easily. I might not even show it in a video, to be honest, but I mean, I feel like that's just asking to lose the game, isn't it? But I will meet you guys up in a bit when we finish the transfer window to end the episode and we'll see if there's any more activity until then. There's a bit of a blip that is going to make the game a bit more interesting. The transfer window still closes in quite a wee while so I think I would have probably not simulated that long. Poor planning for me. But the blip is all these players are on international duty with New Zealand right now. In fact, I need to bring up a youth player into the reserves because we're so so short on players right now. Might move him to the senior team because we do need another striker for this game. Hopefully he's not a youth in the New Zealand team. And of course Hudson Wahongi has gotten food poisoning just before this match. So actually it might pop Devere in there for this game. But I thought you guys might want to watch this game. Hopefully it goes well. I'm sure it will. Um, and I'll get straight into it and I'll be back with you when the ball is kicking off. Straight into the kickoff guys. This is the lineup that we've got out there. Scott is probably the only notable change that we've got. Not that there is a couple of changes but He's probably the most notable because, unfortunately, Kakachi is the only left back we have in our squad, so I felt like I kind of had to put him in the side. Otherwise, our other option was Devere, who can't even play the role, so definitely happy that we didn't release him when I was going through a bit of a releasing spree off camera. But Eastern Suburbs are now actually coming at us, which is making me a bit nervous, but straight away Devere shows why he needs to be in the side over... Hudson Mahongi and Longstaff plays it to Steinman. Dahlman, Holman plays it back to Steinman, who plays a very long ball to Piscopo, who plays it in, hopefully, all the way to Hooper. Falls to Hooper, 
and he's got his first competitive goal for us, and that puts my nerves at ease a little bit because I wasn't too sure if he was going to be a bit of a flop, but with those stats, I really couldn't see it happening. So I'm very happy that he's got his first goal in a competitive match just for a bit of confidence. But as you can see over here, their team is really not very stacked. Not a single name that even I uh, recognise, so I'm sure you guys won't recognise them either, unless you are followers of the FFA Cup or the Australian League. And Hooper gets a second of the game right there. I don't see this thing. There's any way we're going to lose this game, guys. I think I might end it here and come back to you at the end of the game because this could end up being an absolute hammering. And there we have it, guys. Just like I said, at the end of the match, it was a bit of a domination, but still, I am a little bit disappointed with the performance, conceding three goals, which one of them was a penalty, to be fair. But conceding three goals against this kind of team does really show me that I maybe should be seriously looking into that new centre-back. I know I've mentioned it, but I think I should be taking a bit more of a serious look at bringing one in. Well, tell them they played amazingly. Hooper scored five, and I'm so pleased that he's finally off the mark. But I think I'm just going to simulate until the next time we get the draw. We'll see when that is. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll finish the episode here. Yeah, I think we might just finish the episode here, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed the video. Hopefully, next game will be playing in the semi-final of the FFA Cup, and also playing our first game in the league against Western United. If you don't know the rivalry that actually exists between Western United and the Wellington Phoenix, Mark Rodin was our coach last year, and he did quite well. And he just completely snaked us and left to go to them. And he also took some of our absolute legends, including Andrew Durante, Philip Curdo, Burgess, and I swear there was one more player that he stole. Oh, I, think I, I think I'm just a bit bitter. And that's where my audio cut out. Unfortunately, my current screen recorder isn't great, and I'm trying to get that sorted, and I found a new one which should be up and running for episode 5, because I have noticed that the gameplay footage isn't very good. It's looking a bit clunky, and if you put it on 2 times speed like I had been when I watched my videos back, you don't actually notice it. So um, it's a little bit unfortunate that I have haven't noticed that yet, but I'll get straight onto it and it will be perfect for episode 5, fingers crossed anyway. But thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode. The next episode should be up tomorrow. Until then, see you guys later.